imagine if there were really smart aliens out there who wanted to talk to us from super far away. How would they do it? First, I have to say that if they truly are really smart aliens, they would probably want nothing to do with us. We've not really been model representatives of the human race lately, much less Earthlings in general. Then again, maybe that's what makes us attractive to them. They see us for the idiots we are, which might explain why they travel here with their spaceships and instead of take us to your leader, they're going with take us to your sphincter. For some reason, anal probes seem to be their chosen mode of first contact on a fairly regular basis. But I digress. Let's pretend aliens haven't arrived yet or even know we exist, just for the sake of this argument. Let's assume that they can't travel faster than the speed of light, nor can they send messages that fast either. Not even T-Mobile can promise that kind of speed and connectivity, no matter how cool 6G sounds like it might be. So then, how might ET communicate with us? Not being able to overcome the speed of light would make things tricky, and until we capture an Anunnaki with his crashed Nibiru spaceship to interrogate for his travel technology and Garmin Universal GPS, we have to rely on our own scientists for theories. Scientists at SETI, the Search for Extraterrestrial Intelligence, are trying to find out how our extraterrestrial pals might go about reaching out to us from a distance, and they've come up with a theory they call shelling points. Now, despite sounding like a corner of your dinner table at Joe's Crab Shack where you toss your empty crab carcasses, a shelling point is a place, in this case outer space, where two parties who want to communicate might focus their efforts in order to accomplish the task. Kind of like agreeing to meet at the entrance of a mall if you get separated while shopping. Well, if malls were still cool and you wanted to hang out there. Now apparently malls are primarily used for indoor walkers and extraterrestrials visiting Miami. In space, a big bright event like a supernova could be a meeting point or shelling point. It's so huge and noticeable that if aliens wanted to catch our attention, SETI researchers say they might do something there, which kind of makes sense. If you want someone to see you, you either make a big noise or visible display. If you're not able to do that, you go somewhere where there is a big visible display already taking place and you stand next to it, waving your arms crazily like wacky waving inflatable arm flailing tube man in front of a car dealership. A car dealership which just so happens to be located on an exploding sun. Some scientists recently looked around a specific supernova called SN1987A to see if there were any signs of aliens trying to talk to us. Sadly, they didn't find anything. <laughs> Probably because hanging out at a place called SN1987A sounds extremely boring. Even worse than the front entrance of an almost empty shopping mall. But scientists say the idea of searching for these theoretical shelling points is still important. Astronomer Jason Wright said it's like focusing our search efforts by thinking about how aliens might try to get our attention. But again, if aliens are trying to get our attention, why would they need a supernova? or even a regular Nova, or a Chevy Nova, or even a Novella. From the evidence gathered, they're already here, and their constant and inappropriate butt probing is already getting a whole heck of a lot more attention from us than a little blip of light we might see in the night sky if we just so happen to be looking in the right direction at the right moment in time. I say we turn the theory around and create our own shelling point, with a giant searchlight pointed at the sky from the parking lot of a Miami mall with a wacky waving inflatable arm flailing tube man to welcome them, and someone with a cattle prod ready to say, take me to your sphincter. 